Hi, everybody. Welcome to World Kitchen. Um, we're very excited to get started today. I have a friend with me who is going to show you some delicious Mexican dishes. Um, Minerva is originally from Mexico, and we are particularly, aside from the fact that I love Mexican food and I could probably eat it easily four days a week, um, it's also Hispanic Heritage Month which runs from September 15th to October 15th and kind of straddles those two months. So um, I'm very, very happy that Minerva was willing to come on and be my guest chef on World Kitchen today. So come on in, Minerva. <laughs> Hola, amigos. How are you today? So I want to make sure everyone understands that um, there are only three people here in the house, myself and Alex, who you've all met before, and Minerva, and we are all fully vaccinated and we're being very careful. So uh, please don't worry about us and we're taking all the necessary precautions. And um, I will let Minerva take it away. Thank you for having me. This is a pleasure for me to show you some of our favorite Mexican foods and to share a little bit of my heritage, which I am very, very proud of. Um, I always say I am 100% Mexican, but I, I bleed blue and white. So go, go to the state as well. Um, this is, uh, I work in the state in accounting operations. I am originally from Tasco, Guerrero, Mexico. Tasco is known as the world silver capital. And also it's very close to Acapulco, which is a paradise to visit. Mexico City is also about three hours away, which is a fantastic city, a metropolis that offers history, um, architecture, excellent restaurants, shopping, nightlife, everything. So not far from there, you can also find the uh, pyram pyramids uh, and it's just a paradise to visit. But it is a paradise to be in Pennsylvania as well because I am very proud of living um, in this area. I love the people. And how I ended up in Pennsylvania is a wonderful story. I was 19 and a handsome man showed up in our silver store as a tourist. And when he arrived, we saw each other and I just got all these butterflies in my tummy and he did too. So we fell in love at first sight. He was traveling in Mexico with uh, some friends and I was there uh, working at my parents' silver store. So probably about six months later, I had the opportunity to visit the US with my aunt. So we went to New Jersey where we stayed visiting her friend for a month. So of course, Ben and his friend went over to visit us. So they brought us to central Pennsylvania. What a beautiful surprise. We stayed in Friendship, Pennsylvania at the priest uh, house, uh, who was who actually invited them to go to Mexico. After he painted a 40 foot high uh, mural in the church. So that's how we uh, ended up visiting this beautiful region. My aunt and I were here for maybe three nights. So the rest is history. At the same time, I was able to acquire a scholarship to attend a college in Charlotte, North Carolina. And in the process, well, I came to school, we were engaged. Um, I had this uh, wonderful uh, student visa. So after graduating, I went back to Mexico so that they could apply for a fiance visa, which my sister decided to get married. So I had to delay my, the fiance visa trip for another six months. So I came here and uh, we were married civilly and we went back to Mexico to get married in the church. All this took seven years. So since then, it has been just a wonderful life. My husband is an artist. So he makes um, excellent work and uh, I am just very happy to be in central Pennsylvania as well. So we always say we have the best of two worlds. So how about if we just get to cooking and then if you have some questions, please let me know, okay? So we're gonna follow the tradition of Mexico where our moms like to wear their aprons or their grandmothers. So I brought my favorite one, which is uh, with Frida Kahlo. And then of course, Tammy has uh, 
Tamara has the other one that is also very colorful. So we're gonna start cooking for you. We're going to start with the, making the sauce for the enchiladas. So if you were following the recipe, we're going to have our tomatillos uh, first uh, ready to cook. When you buy them in the store, they come like this. They have this beautiful um, husk that you need to peel because it's not edible, okay? So you will remove that. And then you're gonna, um, they are previously washed, but they will always feel a little bit sticky, but that is normal because it's just part of the beautiful uh, tomatillo that we have. So you can remove a little bit of the stem because it's not edible. And you can cut that one in four pieces. Okay, so then you put them in a bowl and we're going to make sure to have some serrano peppers. Now, these are very, very hot. Or you can add as many as you would like. For this recipe, uh, even though it's calling for two or four, uh, we're gonna keep just half of one because you can always add more after you, you have your beautiful enchiladas on your plate. But she's, you not can telling add you, more. she's not telling you she's being nice to me because I can't handle the, the, the chilies. <laughs> so <laughs> if you like the hot chilies, Put, put it all in there, but she's gonna do this for me to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, know, you can always put more somebody you know, in their plate. So we're going to take our um, garlic cloves, we have two, our pepper, and we're going to add them to the boiling water. So that is gonna take a few minutes. Uh, first, we're going to add the pepper in the garlic. And you can actually uh, let those cook for maybe two, three minutes, and then we will add the rest for like seven minutes. But we don't need to wait, we can just add them now because they will go uh, into a blender. These are really nice and fresh. Sometimes it's hard to find Nice, nice looking tomatillos, but they're very fruity, very delicious. And there are many variations, many different dishes that you can uh, cook with this. I will show you one little variation in a moment. So now that they are going to be there, that is gonna make a very fragrant, delicious salsa for your enchiladas. I'm gonna let them cook for a few minutes. And while that is happening, another surprise that we have to have is that we're going to show you how to make excellent guacamole because many people like to use uh, different things. The basic that we show you today is very uh, full of flavor. And also it will be very nice for Super Bowl, which is coming up in February in any occasion really to eat with um, many other different meats, with fish, with uh, chicken. It's just uh, vegeta for vegetarian people, it's also very good. And the aguacate has very good um, properties. It's very healthy for you. There's a question in the chat. I, I assume the tomatillas, are they firm or are they soft? Oh, they're very much firm always. If it's too soft, they're not good. They probably are over. And how is the right taste different? Different from? Like a tomato, I'm assuming. Oh, very different, like yes. day and night. Like a green yes. tomato a little bit, right? Ah, uh, it's a little bit like a green tomato, but a little bit more different. acidity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good. If you just go to eat it like this, it's not good. Ugh, no, that is, that. now you can eat a tomato like this, a little salt, perfect. But a tomatillo, no, I don't recommend that. Is that uh, it's something that you have to use for different sauces. It can, it's good raw, but once it has cilantro, onion, peppers, other things, but just to eat it as a fruit, no. You have to really uh, do something with it. But it's very famous, it's excellent for many different things in Mexico. So while that is happening, I will show you how to make the guacamole. And look how beautiful these avocados are. Now these are typically from like Florida, 
what you, and they're beautiful, they're also excellent, but these are more the avocados from Mexico or California. And you probably have seen the commercial avocados from Mexico. That's what you want for your guacamole. Okay, so we're going to start. Now the, the aguacate has to be a slightly firm, but a little bit, just a little bit soft. I was telling Tamara to, to like her muscle in her arm. So if it feels like the muscle in your arm, I don't mean football players, okay? Like our muscle, maybe. <laughs> then it should be good enough to slice. So that's what we're gonna do next. So what we're gonna need is just a container to put the guacamole before we serve it. So we're going to start by slicing a little bit of the onion. Okay, then you just take it like this and start making your small slices. You can more or less estimate like a quarter cup or four of them. Um, it could be to your taste. If you like fresh onion, you may want to put more or you may want to put less. It's really up to you. So you're basically dicing the onion. We're dicing the onion for the guacamole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make it a little small. And then we're going to also take aroma tomato. Usually I like to slice it first this way, and then it will be a little bit easier to have a smaller pieces. Now I wonder if, um, if somebody likes, um, if you like cilantro, we have to, we will put some of the cilantro also sliced, chopped actually. But if you don't like the uh, flavor of cilantro, you don't have to add that, it's just optional. But uh, we have some beautiful cilantro here that we will make sure to add some more of that and the freshness makes it even better. Oh, this is also delicious with the um, fish on the side, chicken, everything. So you take the leaves from the cilantro that are already previously washed, the stems removed, and we're going to chop that as well. You can make it very fine or you can make it a little coarse is to your liking. And it smells delicious. I'm gonna put just a little bit more. You don't want to overpower your aguacates with the, these ingredients. So it has to be a moderate amount not so much so that you can really taste the aguacate. Okay, so after you have this, you can add that to your bowl. Mm, can you smell? I do, it smells very good. It's a really nice combination. Yes. yes. Sometimes you could also use purple onion, if you would like. Uh, or you can even use a little bit of the scallions, but the white seems to go very well with the, with the guacamole. So you take your, your avocado lengthwise to slice, then you open it and you're going to, usually if you squeeze, you can remove the seed very easily. And then I like to take a small fairy knife Yes, that's perfect. And you start just carefully, so you don't go all the way through, slicing little lines, almost like a little basket weaving like this. So kind of diagonally across and uh -huh. then go across the other side yeah. diagonally. Yeah, okay. and then we're going to go the opposite. Now really be careful not to go through the skin. Now we're gonna use a teaspoon and you're going to scoop it out. Oops, sorry, sorry. So 
again, you can hold it a little bit forward so they can see. There we go. There. So yeah, just kind of like crosshatch or like a basket. Yeah. Yes. Do that. And we're going to start removing into our bowl. You can see we already have all those other ingredients ready. Just start scooping this out. You made that look so easy. Yeah, it is easy. <laughs> it is easy, but it is delicious though for not having to do so much work. Yeah, these are beautiful. And we can get fresh, fresh avocados here in Pennsylvania pretty much year round, right? Yes, yes. We have, um, years ago it was very hard to do that, but now it's very easy. Um, I'm gonna do one more that way we have enough aguacate mm -hmm. to go with our guacamole, to make our guacamole. And, and I've noticed that they are, they come in very different sizes. Sometimes you go and they seem much smaller than this. Yes. Other times they're like this, yeah. Yes, it just depends on the, um, the type of uh, produce that they can get. Mm -hmm. um, some is considered better than other because it shows a different type of plant, like tomatoes, mm -hmm. you have a variety. We also have a variety with the, uh, the aguacates. And at least in my state, we have some that are very small, almost like a prune size. Mm -hmm. And they taste it slightly different, mm -hmm. but they're very good too. Okay. They look good. There's a question in chat asking, how do you stop it from browning? I assume they mean the guacamole. Yes. Well, here is the thing. I know people like to add lemon. I like to add, um, I don't like to add lemon because I don't want to change the flavor very much. So when you are going to serve it, you need to make your guacamole right before you're ready to eat. And what I was going to show you next is when we are done, you can save the seed uh -huh. from the aguacate and that will help from uh, getting brown. Oh, so you put it in your You left put it right? in just, uh, just, just even before you go take it to the table. Oh, okay. Just so that it will help. But uh, let's say that you have leftovers. Normally I just uh, put it in a container that you can close. It may turn a little bit by tomorrow, but you just take a teaspoon and it's time to remove the top and underneath will be all green. Okay. But uh, you could add a little bit of lemon, but mm -hmm. just um, to whatever you have left over, more than what you are making. I've also heard that people will put a uh, plastic wrap on it, but make sure the plastic wrap is completely touching the surface of the guacamole. And that helps sometimes to keep it from the air from getting in there and turning it so brown? I think that probably will be a good thing to try. Yeah, try that? I, yes, I haven't tried it, uh, but I think um, it will work. Those are some of the you know, tricks. You know, <laughs> tricks that we learned along the way. Probably because I hardly ever have any leftover. Leftover, exactly. <laughs> or just make it fresh all the time. Yes, but the same thing, see like this, this, this aguacate was slightly harder. So it's a little bit more difficult, but it's fine, you can still use it. It's just gonna take a little bit longer to, to, to cut up in smaller pieces, but it's going to be just as good. The reason why you don't want your aguacate to be very hard is because it will be a little bit bitter. Mm. It has to be a little bit soft, like your mussels, so that it will be um, a better flavor. I'm gonna raise my hands and I will be right back. Okay, now we're going to get the bucket on with the red pull up. Yep, that would be perfect. So all you have to do as you are steering. We're going to add some salt in a little bit. I do want all the ingredients to be mixed together. And along the way, you can just smash it a little bit as you go. We're going to add uh, salt to taste. You have to have salt, otherwise the flavor is not 
very good because even with the tomato, you need to add a little bit of salt mm -hmm. to your tomatoes so that they taste really, really delicious. I think that that would be probably enough. Mm -hmm. So now that it's ready, we're going to put it in a serving dish. I use a lot of dishes all the time, yeah. but I also wash it. So. <laughs> No, my husband likes to wash dishes very much, but I don't mind. I always say, I don't mind washing dishes. I just use them if I have to use them all. Now, isn't that pretty looking? Beautiful, yes. So we're going to add um, our seed just to keep it safe until we eat to keep the freshness. They even look pretty too, don't yeah. they? So we will save this for later. Okay, I'm make all of this. Thank you. Yes. Finished product. I didn't taste it, but I think I put enough salt. You could taste it. <laughs> I'm sure it will be good. So now we're going to check our um, Tomatillo, see if they seem to be ready. And then we can take these. Okay. Oh, uh, someone had a question about the guacamole. If you want to add chilies, do you do the, add them when they're making the guacamole or at the end of starting? Yes, yes, you can add them right now. The same way we were chopping the tomato, you will chop a little bit of the chili. A serrano will be probably the best, okay? Because it's a serrano. Although from the garden, my friend Jesse, gave me this beautiful, beautiful chile that is very, very hot. And when you have it like this beautiful in your garden, you can also add some of that. Just would be a little bit different flavor, but very good. So let's check our tomatillo, okay. see if they are cooked. Is it all the way? Oh yeah, they're boiling already. They're feeling good. Do they need to cook more? I think they're ready to go. I'm okay. gonna take them and, and strain them. Okay. Because we're gonna cook the sauce a little bit more. Okay, then bring these over and just put them into the colander yes. to drain. Yes, that would be good. Oh, it smells so good. Yes, especially with the wow. piece of garlic. And yes. And just because we like garlic, when we blend them, we're going to add another clump of garlic. How is that? Okay. You like Great. garlic? Yes. Okay. So we're going to start keeping our a little bit of oil here, but I will be uh, making the, the sauce. Blend. Blenders are very important in Mexican cuisine. We use blenders for almost everything. Not only for milkshakes, but we also make uh, sauces for soup, we love our milkshakes. We make uh, in the morning for breakfast, fresh milk, the banana, sugar, maybe vanilla, and that is a wonderful breakfast drink as well. So we're gonna bring those first. We'll start adding those to the blender with a spoon. Any of them. So what's already in the blender? We put a little bit of cold water because we have these uh, cold tomatoes, I mean, hot tomatoes coming. And we added some fresh cilantro, but we can add a little bit more. And it's for safety that we want to have a little bit of the water so that the blender doesn't get too hot. And maybe we use a little bit more of the water. More right. water? Yeah, let's put a little bit more water okay. just to make sure that a little bit, uh, not too hard. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit at a time, okay? Because we don't know. How is it? Okay. Okay. 
start cooking that little bit of salt to blend the other ingredients. Now in this pan, I have just a little bit of onion. We're gonna add a little bit of oil to start seasoning our sauce. And just be careful because you put the spreader when it's too hot. So we're just gonna wait a little bit. And then while this is cooking, I will finish the rest of the More sauce. More tortillas, okay. Uh -huh. Yes, this onion would really flavor the um, the oil. And we already have garlic here. Okay. The cilantro, so all together is going to infuse this one of the flavors. Mm -hmm. Can you pull it out? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay, like my mom always said, you have to put just a little bit at a time and run. Mm -hmm. We're just going to use a big um, a spoon to stir. You know, what are you spoon in there? Uh, about that one, perfect. Thank you. We have to add a little bit of the. Now, this, if you leave it coarse like this a little bit, that's good. But you can also blend it a little bit more fine. So it's the tomato. Because it's a little bit porous and it's going to be cooked, it's not going to be bad to your taste. It will, mm -hmm. will be good. Okay, so now that we're doing this, we're going to add the rest. Oh, someone asked, can that onion in the pan be chopped? The onion. Yes, that was just for flavor. But yes, it could be chopped if you want to keep it. Um, after this is done, I will just remove those little pieces of onion. It was just to infuse the oil, but you could chop it finely and just keep it as part of the sauce. Mm -hmm. That would be fine. Okay, so while that's happening, we're gonna make uh, the rest of our tomatoes. In our pepper, we have a more onion here and it's more cilantro. Here is our pepper right there. Mm -hmm. You can add as much as you would like. More water in this one. Okay. I think we're not just to have because I don't want it to be too hot yet. So, this is something you can do ahead of time, you know, with your sauce to have um, that prepared ahead before you actually make into lavas, but we wanted to show you how to do it. They're all different, right? Like they probably because it was hot. Okay, so we have the rest. And then you can just keep doing this. We actually have are making two batches today. So mm -hmm. we're gonna stop there, but uh we're going to probably just blend a little bit with the onion and cilantro. This right here. Okay, yeah. we're going to add that. So onion and cilantro. Yes. A little bit of the water. And I need to be it. We're gonna wait until our um, sauce starts to blend all those ingredients and season. We're gonna add some uh, salt to that. Okay, let me put my piece probably on the side. Now while that, well, okay, we're going to add this salt. 
And this time we're going to taste it. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to need just a little teaspoon to make sure it has enough salt. We just wait for it to simmer a few minutes. Now, what I wanted to show you is that the same salts that we're using here, you can also make a salsa with a small variation. So what you can do is uh, add some of these and we're going to make it a salsa to go with beans or with your eggs, with any other meats. So we're going to take a different um, container for that. And I will show you how to make a, a little bit of a salsa. You see that onion there? I will now discard it. I'm going to taste it now carefully. Definitely can use more salt. <laughs> I think you will be able to use all of that. So, okay, so now we're gonna turn the heat down on this and let it simmer slowly. And we are going to move to one of the options that will be to fry the tortillas to make the enchiladas. So we're going to have um, two options. If you would like to save calories, you don't have to fry the tortillas. So we will make two versions for you today. Some will be the method and no frying. And then if you fry them, it's just a little bit easier to work with the tortillas because uh, they have a tendency to break if you leave them in the sauce too long. But uh, this time we're going to make uh, like half and half. That way you will have uh, the two techniques, but you can decide which one you would like to, to use. Yes. You want this on high or? A medium high would be good, yes. So the tortillas, it's very important that they are corn tortillas. The flour tortillas are also good for enchiladas because I have tried some delicious recipes. But they are um, a little bit more northern Mexico where they like to use the flour tortillas more. Um, southern Mexico, where I am from, we are used to uh, basically corn tortillas most of the time. So another uh, question uh, people have sometimes, some are made with uh, yellow corn like this and some are made with the white corn. So the flavor really is the same. It's just a different type of corn. So we're gonna use a half and half. That way you can, our, our guests here, our, our host here can taste both. <laughs> okay, so now that your oil is getting hot, we will take um, the tortilla for like 10 seconds. Let me make it a little bit. Higher. So you will try to um, just kind of saute the tortilla a little bit, see how it's getting soft as soon as you put it in. And then you're gonna uh, turn it to the other side. I think this has to be a little bit more warm, yeah. The next one would be perfect. I think if you put them when it's a little bit cold, they may absorb more yes. um, oil, right? Yeah, right. So we're gonna take this out just for, just to keep it aside and wait for this to be a little bit warmer. And our sauce, I think it's doing good. It's just slowly steamering. Mm -hmm. Smells really good. And remember it had the, the cilantro, the onion. onion tomatillo and the pepper. So you can make them as warm as you want. If someday you only have jalapeno peppers in Pepper Serrano, you can also use jalapeno peppers. Mm -hmm. If you like them really warm or hot rather, 
you can use even an habanero pepper in there. Right? Oh. How many people venture? I think your husband does. Yeah, he likes he to <laughs> Yes, I do too. I, I can eat habanero peppers. See, that's a way to try. It is always because your pan is a little bit thicker, so it takes oh, a little longer. Yeah. I'm going to give it a moment. Along and yeah. yeah, is anybody cooking along with us today or is everybody just watching? You feel free to unmute yourself if you want to make a comment or ask a question. Otherwise, if you put it in the chat, we'll read it for you. Yeah, what well, seems to be almost boiling now, so that's pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good now. Uh huh. See how it sizzles. Yeah. That's what you want. You want it to sizzle. Sizzle. Yeah. So it doesn't take so much um, of the oil. oil. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you do. If it breaks, that's fine. You can patch it on the in the process. Okay. <laughs> that one it was already like that though. Okay. And what we have um we're having here some uh, paper towels. That way we will drain the excess oil. And we will make one of the other ones too. Okay, I would say that's good enough. I'm gonna use some of the whites, the white tortillas. Just a couple more and then the rest we will do without the oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the oil basically gives it a little different flavor, but it's almost more, a little bit like a tortilla chip flavor yeah. because of the oil. And it will be easier to work with them because um, they may not break as easily. Yeah, when you are softer. Yes, but really, I usually don't like to use the oil just to fill the calories because yeah. I really need to lose quite a few pounds. <laughs> I think we can all say that after the last 18 months, oh, especially, huh? Easy. Yes. Yes, it's been, it's been hard for most people. But work it just wonderful. Okay, so here they are. We're gonna turn this off. Okay. Move that away. And then these we can make it a little bit uh, put it on high. Okay. There it is. You want it turned higher? It's only on about four there. Yeah, let's make it just a little bit higher. Just one last one. Okay. It's wonderful to cook with help. <laughs> <laughs> Usually at home, if I am cooking something Mexican, it's just myself. Yes. And uh, my husband likes to cook, but not, he likes other things, you know, like Cornish hands or oh. he helps to stop to do the stuffing for the turkey. Mm -hmm. His mother was a wonderful cook. And she um, was a Slovak, even though my husband is, uh, his father was Italian descent, they ate mostly uh, Slovak food okay. at home. So, so is he originally from Pennsylvania? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes, I think I forgot to say that, right? He, took, he could have been traveling from Anywhere. Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, that still seems to be good right now. See the color, how it changed? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, that change. So yeah. what I would do now is um we're going to separate a little bit here to make a different salsa variation, which I will show you in a little bit. We we'll put this aside, okay? So now we're going to bring our platter and bring our uh, big dish behind you to put to bake the enchiladas. Oh, oh, this one here, yeah, right yes. there. Do you um do you want that turned off now or no? No, we can just let it go. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Pull the chicken out too. We had one that was like. Yep. Yeah. Chicken that was previously cooked. Uh, there's a couple people in the chat saying they are cooking along, and someone asks, Where do you like to shop for ingredients? Uh, Wegmans, Wise, and Walmart. Those are the only three choices around here. Yeah, I had never really noticed how much Walmart has. When you told me to go mm -hmm. to Walmart to get some of these items, 
There are entire sections. They have yeah. a section, yes. I will say if you're looking for the cheeses, they're not by the regular craft American cheeses. They're over in a different section. So don't get discouraged if you don't see them right away. Check, check the other sections. Yes. Yes, uh, when I came here, or oh, believe it or not, 35 years ago, it was very difficult to find ingredients. So whenever we went to the city of Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, then we were always trying to find a Mexican store where we could find these ingredients. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. So what we're gonna do is just dip your tortilla really fast. Oh, and okay. I'll... Interesting. Okay. And um, if it's folded like that, it's okay. So you take your chicken. Now we have very clean hands, so yeah, we're gonna use to our hands. hands. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start rolling your enchilada. So it's just chicken inside. Yep, just chicken, but okay. remember that for the chicken you use the um, okay. yeah. garlic and onion. Yeah, garlic and onion. Do you want to try salt. a little bit of the overhead camera? So uh, we can get a hot pad and just put the sauce. Okay, you want to do that? We can we can bring the sauce over. Yeah, yeah. just the hot pad. Yeah. <laughs> I might help just show people how we're rolling. Yes. Especially the Okay, just a second. Let me go get on the shirt. Tortilla, chicken, papa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do again very fast. <laughs> And we're going to have a little bit, we're going to add a little bit more sauce anyway, when it's in the pan, but this is the original, hmm. original plan. Uh, someone asked what spices were used to cook the chicken? Right, so she just told me to do this the day before as I sent you in the email, um, <coughs> so that we could, basically I wanted to um, be able to use the um, chicken broth to um, cool it so that I could skim the fat off the top and also just have the chicken cool enough to work with. So I actually did this last night and I boiled it with water, salt, pepper, a little garlic powder, um, some onion, and I threw a little garlic in there. And actually I, I use my own, <laughs> the way I cook chicken is I throw a little bit of celery and carrot in there as well, just, just for flavor. Of course I remove those, you know, when I'm, when I'm done. <clears throat> yes, and that would just infuse all those flavors into the yeah. meat. So you don't need a lot because your other ingredients will come when you are actually topping your enchiladas, which I will show you. If one of your tortillas breaks like this, you can just patch it in the process. Don't, do not worry. It's fine. It will, it will work just as well whenever we bake them together. They will be fine like that. So there you are. Now, one of the um, things that we had in our blender when we were uh, prior to the show, we added a little bit of water, but also you can use the chicken broth mm -hmm. to make the sauce as needed. And then you can also use the chicken broth for other of the uh, things that you will use for your enchiladas, like for to cook the, the rice, mm -hmm. the chicken broth is a very good idea because it will have a much better flavor than just water. Okay, so that that will be uh, conclude our enchiladas that we fried, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna make the non-frying and that will have to act a little bit faster in the sauce because they can almost disintegrate. So I just go like this. And now you chip in. We will make just a few more to show you, to fill up our, our dish, that way you know. Okay, I'll wash my hands. I'm gonna help you out here. So we're gonna, okay. do, we, do we try to keep them as? Um, yes, neat like this, like in yeah. a row. In a row, like but not, not squish too much together. No, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. And then I'm gonna make a couple more. Yeah, that one, yeah, you're right. That one's really falling apart. 
Oh, you stop. Oh, see how yeah. nice? Yeah, it's no, no problem if it does. Okay, there is one. Okay. Teamwork, right? Yeah. Makes things better. Maybe that one on the side. But really, the ones that are you make with the flour tortillas and the chicken, they are so good also. Yeah. That's one of the things about Mexico that each state has different cuisine. Mm -hmm. uh, we have such a variety. Of course, when you are by the ocean, you have fish. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, better beef, northern Mexico. In the south, we eat a lot of chicken and pork. Mm -hmm. But then you go to Acapulco and you can have, you know, a fish grilled mm -hmm. on uh, seaside. You can eat that. You can eat fresh oysters. It's just very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I think we just have room for mm -hmm. one more, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. I can see how the, the tomatillo sauce really flavors the tortillas here. Yes. Okay. Okay, so now what we will, we will do next is we have our shredded cheese. Uh, over here. Yeah, we're going to have, um, probably add a little bit more of the sauce, just so that it's not so dry when we put them in the oven. Not too much because sometimes it could uh, break them too, but just, just a little bit more. And you always have extra that you can bring to the table if you want to add more. So we're going to have Mexican blend. Yes. Uh, cheese that you can melt, which is this shredded cheese. Usually has like asadero, cheddar. Yeah, this one says cheddar, Monterey Jack, asadero, and quesadilla fancy. Quesadilla fancy. Yeah. This is just a regular Wegmans one, but you can get it in any any you know, uh, brand. So this is how it will look before they go to the oven mm -hmm. because we want the cheese to melt and then we're going to make them special when we're going to add other things okay. to that. Now let's we'll take those to the oven. <laughs> and we had our oven preheating at 350 degrees. Yes, 350, just until the cheese will melt. So while that is happening. Do you want to put a timer on it? Yes, please, just like uh, probably five minutes to start. So we want to show you how to make um, an easy dessert that you can either have it before as an appetizer, but we like to have it for a dessert because of the combination of the different flavors. And Alex, will you hand me that plate that is already done, please? Thank you. So we have a fruit that is called um, guayaba. And I brought some to show you. This fruit is known more like guava uh, around here. Okay. And that is um, very, oh, it smells wonderful. I wish they made perfume with that. Oh, it is nice. Isn't it yeah, wonderful? It's very, um, it's very fruity. <laughs> it's very yeah. fruity and very enticing. Yes. Okay. So this fruit in Mexico, they make um, ate. Oh, here is called guava paste. We call it ate. And it's a process where they have to cook this for a long time with sugar and other ingredients until they can make this paste. And you can buy it in our local stores. Um, not always, but when you see it, buy it because it's really delicious. It's sweet. And uh, we have here a queso fresco that is also in our local so stores. Mm -hmm. And this queso fresco is probably um, one of the many uh, ingredients that we use for either salty foods or also for a dessert in mm -hmm. this case. 
So what you do is when you open this, you have to slice it in pieces like this. And then you will take uh, another, you can use a cracker if you want. Uh, it could be a Ritz cracker, or it could be a club cracker, or it could be actually a uh, grand cracker. Oh, okay. okay, so you put a piece of the cheese like this, and you just top, top oh, that with the ate. Mm -hmm. ate. See, like here is another piece. So that's what you will do, and just um, the, the flavors of the sweet and the cheese and the little saltiness of the cracker is just a nice little dessert mm -hmm. to clean your palate. And of course, to have a little bit of uh, Kahlua and cream, maybe. Oh, okay. Or the Grammarnier. Okay. Or just water. <laughs> okay. Right? But that will be something that you can serve easily for the serve. And it's just very, very good combination. Mm -hmm. And uh, one other thing you can do with the, uh, the guayabas, um, you can remove this part and the bottom, and then you slice it in four pieces, put them in a pot with water to cook until they get soft. You add sugar and cinnamon, and then it will be it will make its own syrup that way. Mm. And you can serve it uh, cold or you can serve it warm uh, with just a little dish like this with a little spoon, and that would be also very nice, nice dessert because the fruit is just so amazing. Do you find those here as well? Yes, usually I find these um, in a container at Walmart. Okay. Okay. They come like maybe six or twelve. And months. are those also firm or, or soft? Uh, they have to be almost like the way you want your avocados. If you feel okay. they have to be not uh, not too too soft, but, but a little bit of yeah, just, just a little. You can put your thumb in it. You can feel yes softness yes. there. Yeah. Yes, and they're sweet. They're they're good. Mm -hmm. Um, we should slice one so okay. we can see. Oh, you have a knife there. Okay. Let me show you how it looks inside. Oh, so there, yeah, there's no see? seed. I mean, there are seeds, but they're- They're edible. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, here. I don't know if you can see that. There are seeds in there, mm -hmm. little seeds, but they're soft seeds, right? Yes, yes, they're soft, they're easy to digest, mm -hmm. really. And we use that a lot. One other thing that we do around Christmas time, we make a hot punch, but mm. we call it ponche. And this is what we use plus uh, some apple, the cocote, which is very hard to find here, and sugar cane, fresh mm -hmm. sugar cane. We'll bring that to a boil while until we can add the cinnamon and uh, little raisins, mm. little prunes, and corn. And that is a delicious hot uh, beverage okay. that we use at, around the holidays nice. as well. Uh, I think yes. someone's asking me how you pass it again. Guayaba. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. is, the spelling is G U A. Y A B A, but or B A, but they call it guava here. Mm -hmm. See, which is fine. We know what that is, and <laughs> it's the same thing. Oh, you can see a picture actually. Some varieties could be green and pink oh. on the inside. Okay. That's just a different variety. And this is mostly. Yeah, I wondered why this yellow. came out red, whereas these look yellow. Uh huh. Yeah. That's because they use the, they use the red the one. Yeah, the red, okay. red guayabas. I think our enchiladas are okay. ready, correct? You want to finish up those last two? So yes. we can mm -hmm. put the uh, finished product. The, uh... Yes, we're going to just see. I'll just see if the cheese is melted, please. And I uh, used to. Uh, Mom, in the middle drawer with the towels. Right behind. Oh. This is wonderful. I was watching the Tunisia program uh -huh. that you had in August, and it was really nice. Oh, thank you. You learned how yeah. to do that food. I was just looking so hungry. Yeah. Well, I oh, was I know. That. Anytime <laughs> I do this, it's uh... yes, they're beautiful. Let's let's get here. Yeah, put it here for now because we're gonna bring something to show everything, right? Right. Right. Okay. So I will give these. Ready to plate all our wonderful food, except. Mm -hmm. That. Okay, and then we're going to show how to finish our salsa with the mm -hmm. chopped cilantro and the chopped onion. Okay. 
Now we're gonna get ready for our fiesta, right? Yes. Yes, she Shade. brought these beautiful, beautiful things to put on the table. Yeah, she'll take them around. That's upside down. Oh, she's upside down. That's okay. We can see her. We we'll just make it sideways. Right? Yeah. Okay. Our Frida Kahlo. I love Frida Kahlo and Diego. So I thought I'm going to display my collection. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alex, you want oh, here, those? Oh, yeah. Where do you want those? Uh, probably right here. Okay. <laughs> then I, I want to add a little bit of this cilantro. Oh, do and you want your hot pad on underneath? Oh, yes. Okay. So how you plate your enchiladas, we're going to give you one version, which is um, you take them, usually we eat three, you can have one or two, okay, so you take them like this, and to this version is not in your recipe because these are only ideas. You can add shredded lettuce on top. And we're going to add sour cream. Whenever you use sour cream, make sure to always use a little bit of salt because that is what makes it good. If you taste it without salt, mm -hmm. it's not very, very good flavor. Okay. And this was a special sour cream that you had me get in the, um, the Mexican section of the store. Yes. Yes. Now, Alex, can you get that out of the fridge? Yes, I, it's uh, the brand El Cacique because it's a little bit more runny. Yeah. So it's than the, Yeah, this is the, it's a little bit more ready to use. Yeah. But the flavor is probably close to our other brands, but okay. it's just a good uh, ready to serve. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to make it a little bit running with milk, but mm -hmm. this is just ready to go. Okay. So what I would like to do is when if you use the lettuce, you could also slice some tomato. Okay, so I'm gonna slice a little bit of the tomato just for looks. And it's very good too in flavor, of course. So you add a little bit of the tomato on top to make it more colorful. And you can you already have the sour cream. We're going to add a little bit of the salt. Uh, okay, I need more salt. Mm -hmm. And you take the slices of onion like this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yes. And don't forget a little bit of salt for your tomato and the sour cream. And then you can put some of the guacamole on the side. So that is one version. So if you prefer, if you like vegetarian, if you're vegetarian, what you could do is instead of the chicken, you can also you can make make them with cheese. You know the queso mm -hmm. fresco. You can slice the cheese instead of the chicken, mm. and it will be a wonderful meal. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is a variation. Uh, another thing you can do if you don't like uh, cheese. You could also um, use other vegetables to as a filling. For example, zucchini, mm -hmm. just fried zucchini, and you can add that into your enchiladas instead of the meat or the cheese. Okay. And then you can top as you know you, any way you would like. So the other version that we have is we're gonna make um, more like the photograph books in our advertisement for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna plate the same way, but at home, I made you some Mexican rice to go as a side dish. And this rice, there are many recipes really that you can find, but basically it's just um, garlic, tomato, onion, rice, and the chicken broth from the mm -hmm. cooking your chicken. And then you can make your own beans and also put it on the side. 
Now these are just black beans that mm -hmm. you use. Mm -hmm. These are black beans that I just uh, cooked until they were tender. Then you add the salt. And then in a pan, you add a little bit of uh, garlic and onion and the beans and let them simmer a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that will be called fried beans. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add our uh, sour cream. And don't forget the cheese. We have two kinds of cheese to add on top of this. One is the um, cotija cheese, grated. Thank you. And the other one is the uh, just regular, uh, in Mexico, we call it queso seco, but the version here will be similar to the chan. So if you put that cotija, cotija cheese there, then we can sprinkle the other enchiladas with the parmesan or vice versa, you can play with the different flavors. Mm -hmm. We only want to show you what you can do. And remember I was talking to you about the um, other version of salsa, okay? So that's what we uh, served after we had it in our pan. And all you need to do is chop a little bit of fresh onion to here and a little bit of cilantro, or you can also put it uh, just the whole leaves with your fingers. A mm -hmm. little bit coarse, and that is a fantastic combination of flavors because it's the, the cooked tomatoes or tomatillos and the raw veggies, and that will be very, very good, delicious. And then, of course, you have to chop a little bit of the onion mm -hmm. and put it there, and uh, you can use your fingers if you want, and if not, just chop it finely. Mm -hmm. And that will also make a good uh, salsa that mm -hmm. can go on your rice. Or you can make it for breakfast with your scrambled eggs uh -huh. and many other things like meats, etc. Wow. Okay. okay. So Alex is going to show this version, the plated version. I wish you could smell this. It just all smells delicious. And then so can yeah. we show this one? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we, we showed that one. And then um, we also, as as we know, we had the uh, the little dessert plate. And of course, you can always serve it with some extra cilantro, people like that, yes. or even throw a little on top, whatever, yeah. Yes, and also with hot peppers, you can mm. add more. If you would like, yes. uh, you can chop some of the jalapenos <laughs> or some of this wonderful pepper. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's all to your taste. Also mm -hmm. with habaneros, if you like to eat habaneros. You see, this rice, with, if we add a little bit of this salsa, mm -hmm. it just looks so pretty. Let me show you. All the flavors is very good. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So directly on the rice. Beautiful. Same as you would do it on your scrambled eggs. Nice. So there beautiful. It is. Different wow. flavors, different colors. And it's yeah, it's so colorful. Um, everything's beautiful. So much of the pottery that you brought is actually from, from Mexico. Mexico. Yes, this is Talavera from Puebla. These are my wedding dishes. Oh. <laughs> This is my everyday dish, but yeah. we have this. Uh, my mom, my mother gave me these little dishes. Yeah. Um, so, and, and then, of course, we also use we also use some of yours that are beautiful, <laughs> right? From uh, different. Yeah. We use a lot of dishes. These are actually this from, is Mexico, from Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then I brought some baskets. The basket that has the oh, tortilla chips. Oh yeah, we want to bring the tortillas over, Alex, and the baskets. So the tortilla chips you would use to go with the guacamole, right? Yes, you can use that with the guacamole, but it's also good with the beans. So yes. Yeah, so like many places in Mexico, when you go and get uh, beans mm -hmm. as a side dish, they, they bring them to you like this. So these are both Mexican baskets? Yes, this basket was given to me by my grandmother. It's made in oh, the yes. state of Guerrero. Mm -hmm. And this basket was given to me by my brother-in-law, Gerardo. Mm -hmm. This is from Michoacan where the, mon the monarch butterflies arrive. The trees have this type of um, branches mm -hmm. that you find on the ground. And then the artisans make these wonderful baskets Beautiful. From, from that region. Mm -hmm. So that's um, colorful. Mexico is always colorful. Very colorful. Uh, someone was asking, they missed, what was the name of this kind of pepper? I don't know. My friend is from her, my American friend from her garden, but it's very hot. I don't know the name. She just said, do you want some hot peppers? We can eat them. I said, please bring them over. Yeah, anything hot pepper. Yeah. Anything hot pepper. Is it Hungarian hat? I think it's Hungarian hat. 
Okay. Because they're a Hungarian and the Hungarian hat. So maybe this is, it looks like that to me. But uh, we have, of course, a version of what looks like a jalapeno, right? This one is from your garden? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what these are exactly. They were an heirloom pepper. Uh huh. And they also, I see these a lot that are grown in this area, more than, of course, the jalapenos that have to bring from other places. Yeah. Okay, well, I think this is everything. And I wanna say thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you want to join us again in October, um, October 18th, we will be doing um, an international charcuterie um, world kitchen. Uh, some fun things that I've been finding over the last several months and have been really interested in. So I think that will be a, an interesting one and I will put get all that up on the website next week. So you can start registering for that. Okay, well, thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. It's been and a I pleasure. Can't wait to dig into all of this. <laughs> it smells delicious. Yes, my husband says, please make sure to bring me. Yes, some. exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I said, yes. That's another reason we couldn't make them happy because she doesn't like to eat very, oh, he doesn't, very okay. happy. Oh, he does. Okay. So, like I said, it's the best of the two worlds. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much.